Fabulous Wednesday with Teacher Marisa. Hi, how's it going out there? Okay, can we just talk about how hot it was here yesterday in Portland? Yes. And over the weekend, we hit, what did we hit? Like 100 and... 15, 15, 15, 13, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, it was 19. so it was so hot and today it's like 78 and we are like enjoying it it feels really good so yeah it was it was kind of miserable but <clears throat> excuse me we made it welcome we're so excited that you're here don't forget to put in your tulips let us know who you are also where you're from uh, let's see if you are a first timer uh, let us know and we'll all welcome you in. And let's see, we have in the studio with us, Leanne of course is here with us today. Hi! <laughs> and she will be on Facebook. Correct. Yeah, and also Caledonia from Afar will be on Facebook as well. And then teacher Carolyn is here. She's gonna be on YouTube. Say hi. Hi everybody. And along with Susie mm -hmm. on YouTube. And we have Parker. Hi. <laughs> and he will be on technology. And we have a guest in the studio as well. My man friend, Dane, is actually joining us today. Say hi, Dane. Hi, <laughs> so uh, lots of things are happening today with the fabulous and funky, although I also, let's see, what did I call this? I call this funky and modernized, so we'll make sure that there's definitely fabulous in here. So <laughs> we should just get started. Don't forget to um, also ask questions and we'll just um, answer them as we go. I'm actually going to try to do four arrangements again. And we are gonna celebrate a little bit, well, actually we are, of the 4th of July holiday. Not necessarily, necessarily going into the typical red, white, and blue, as you can see. There are, there, it's, it's similar, so we're just going to update it, um, modernize it, funky, fresh, right? So let's just get started. Um, okay, I'm going to grab these two bottles. And someone had asked, or actually commented on the Tulip Tribe page, they said, oh, I can't wait to see what blue materials you are using. Well, to make it easy, I just found these two blue bottles <laughs> to bring in the blue. Okay, this was by accident, this arrangement. This isn't gonna take very long. It's just gonna be very simple, very funky, but it literally, actually Leanne and I were kind of talking in the uh, warehouse and then I was playing with this huge bucket of curly willow that is rooting at the bottom. And I picked it out and I was just started playing with it and was like, this is super cool. Hold on. Okay, so how many of you, right, keep your curly wheel all around and it gets all rooty and it gets all crazy? So I took it out, I'm like, this actually kind of looks kind of cool. It's kind of looks like spark like a sparkler a little bit right um kind of sort of <laughs> um so i took off the rubber band because uh, it was still in the rubber band uh because it you know kind of looked cheap right and then i actually put bind wire around it to keep everything together then i took an 18 gauge wire and taped it hair pinned around it twisted then i just kind of hung or uh, placed it inside and then kind of just did, let's see, it kind of just like fell over and, is that how it was? Something like that, I think. Let's see, let's play with it. I think it was, yeah, it was more like that. And I was like, uh, that's really cool. So I wanted to share this one with you today. So let's play with this one. And as we're going through, I have your questions from the Tulip Tribe page. And I wanted to actually start off with Jim's question. Let's see, what did I want to start off with? Jim actually asked, with fun, funky, and modernized, does the Fibonacci sequence apply with these two? Jim, everything has, is in the Fibonacci sequence, everything. So, believe it or not, I actually used the sequence and came in and did all the calculations with these just to see. Um, and pretty much everything fit right in. Let's see, I actually wrote it down. And for those of you out there that know the sequence, 
who learned this in the advanced course can test it out on your own too and see. So let's see, my tallest vase is 11 inches, okay? And if you times that by 1.618, I got 18. And honestly, going this way, it's 18 inches. And I didn't even, I, it was just all by instinct and gut. So it was, it was pretty, pretty cool. Okay, I'm placing in some plumosa that I color enhanced white. So this is going to kind of spark out, right? Like more of the sparklers, bringing in the red, white, and blue. This plumosa is very pokey. So who do we see out there? Is, are, do we have people joining? You know, you got a full house over here at Facebook, and Dane Drake says hi, and John <laughs> says hi, man friend. Um, but you've got a whole bunch, and then they think your perky hair goes with your funky and fabulous. So, oh! <laughs> and they've decided you got it, girl. So you got a fan club out there. Yay! Yeah, you probably all noticed I cut my bangs again. I was trying to grow it out, and I just I couldn't I couldn't do it. So they I I had to chop them. Okay, so just adding in the white just brightens it up, right? And then this is just going to be a really, really simple arrangement because you don't want to hide this mechanic. Do you notice that I kept the roots out? I want you to, I want you to see that. So we don't want to cover up the artistry here. So we're just going to enhance the branches with just a little bit of, look at movement with the clovers. These are just perfect because these are our little fireworks. So a lot of the materials I use today are, or am using today is very textural. They almost kind of all represent fireworks for the 4th of July. Do you all have plans for 4th of July? I'm going to my friend's cabin again. Remember, I think a few weeks ago, I was telling you all that I went there and, whoops, the lake there is like, literally looks like the Caribbean. So I'm really excited. What are you all gonna do? Let us know. So just simple, very, very simple with our little clovers and also these little bottles here don't have a lot of space in here but here is just a very very unique and simple way let's see if we can oh there's not a lot of room and i can't see from this side how does this look from the front carolyn She's my, she's my eyes. It's, I think you are looking good. You got the one on yeah, that over there, that. This that, one? And make it come forward a little bit. Twist him. There you go. Yeah. It's just, it's very tight in there. Maybe yeah. like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we Whoa. go. Yeah. Oh! Oh, oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> fast. I want to take it home. <laughs> So see how just, it's, it's really interesting. I know a lot of you out there too that have taken classes with us. When we come around and adjust arrangements, we'll literally adjust something, maybe a half an inch or something, and it just makes such a difference. So let's just do one more there. So just a, just a little bit. Oh, Leon has a question. Well, John asked, would you do 18 inches high and wide, or you do the next sequence down for height? Do you, what are you going to be doing there? Yeah. The yep. Great question. So let, let, me, let me look at my notes here. Let me see what I wrote down here. <laughs> so, um, so I write, I want 18 inches wide. I can also go 18 inches tall. Um, this probably uh, up here would not be, so I start going down, so 18, 18 would be up here, then it went to 11, 7, 4, 2.5, so probably right about here is probably about 7. So within the sequence, starting at 18 inches up, I actually hit the sequence and started going down, um, so great question. But 
using that sequence, I challenge you all, right? Because everything in this world has it. Our bodies, our knife, your car, everything has that, right? So practice with what you're making. It's really just justifies proper proportion, right? So if you're making something, do the measurements and see how close you get. You would be really, really surprised how spot on we are because it's really all just by intuition. So this is really just it, very simple. It's just like a burst of fireworks and you can really, really see this simple armature I made. I hope you like it. Just starting off easy and small because we're getting big. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move this, these ones. So while you're moving that, I'm gonna give a shout out to our Tulip Tribe over here on, uh, where are we, YouTube. Uh, Bernadette Ann, who we just did, she's a new grad, just did her certificate, it's ready to go. Oh, it went out in the mail today. Congratulations! Olga, Rose, Sandy, Heidi, Sue, Leslie, and she says thumbs up for this live today. Yay. Kushka, who's joining us for the first time. Kushka. Gordon, Sam Path, Debbie, Marmac is joining us after a long time. Oh my hour. gosh, I haven't seen her in there, heard, seen, heard from you in a long time. Licia and Elnora. Thank you for joining everybody. Mm -hmm. We are so happy you made it. Okay, next one. Let's see here. We're going pretty large on this one, okay? So I'm gonna have to design it back here. It goes way past, it's gonna be out of the frame. Okay, so let's just talk about this really quick. Um, this is gonna be, excuse me, designed directly in water. And to elevate these larkspur, so they're super tall, is I actually took some floral netting and just crunched it up inside. And it's probably right about here, so it's gonna elevate my stems a little bit taller. So let's see, this design, so Drake is out there, right? Yeah, he is. This design was inspired by one of Jake's, his, uh, Jake's, Drake's uh, last submission. So first, how easy is this? You just take all of your flowers, do a, actually let's just use the bunch cutters because that's a lot of stems to cut with the knife. And Marisa would like to keep her fingers today. Okay, so we're doing a nice cut. And just drop them right in. Talk about cutting down on labor. Okay, so <laughs> let's see here. Let's just leave these for later. So Drake did this awesome arrangement. It was very like hedge inspired. He took all his equisetum and uh, made like a hedge. I can only assume he did it in foam and the precision that that takes to make it look that perfect is super hard. So kudos to you. So what I'm actually, this is not necessarily a hedge, but it's sort of inspired by, but what I wanted to show was adding a really cool branch to it to really give it some dynamic line. So we had someone ask, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, Nikki. Nikki had asked, any tips on how to spray paint materials blue? I got you, girl, because I got it right here. Let's see where we put it. Whoa, I just got caught on the doorknob. Okay, let's see. So I have a piece of curly willow. Like it. And can we just really try it like color enhancing? Not spray painting. Color enhancing sounds so just upscale, right? <laughs> so I color enhance some curly willow. Uh, the easiest and probably most proficient way to do this is to use like a primer base first. So I basically used flat white and then went over with the blue. Um, if I went over blue first, it won't, it won't hold its color very well. Uh, I usually, if I have a choice, I would use uh, super silver, um, but we didn't have any, so flat white worked really well. And um, I probably used <laughs> yeah. that because I like it too. Leanne used it all. Um, so that, that'll really help it hold its color. So pretty much with anything, even like yellow or orange, red. I have other things that I painted red today that I went over with white first and it just helps the pop, um, the pop, the color pop. Okay, so watch this. So let's go ahead and add this one in. Let's see, this has to go in the, in the exact spot that I want it to go. 
All right. While you're doing that, Janet said another good word for that would be colorize. Ooh, colorize. Like it. Like it. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of work in these larks for here. And it's a little wobbly. Oh, look at how cool. Okay, so then we're just going to take some of these other larkspur and add them in just to kind of balance out some of these lines in certain areas. And we're kind of swishing around a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to fix this. And do you see how the blue from the top travels all the way down? Talk about a line, your eye, or excuse me, the path for your eye to follow, <laughs> right? It looks great on camera. It's really fabulous. Okay. It reads well. Okay. So let's grab some. Oh, actually, this is a great question from, let's see. Um, Sue, Sue wanted, hi Sue, I hope your kitty's watching. Um, I, uh, she wanted a refresher on what goes with what. Well, girl, I mean, anything can go with anything, right? It just depends on how you harmonize and blend and mix and match everything together so everything is one. And I feel like it also just depends on the, um, the person or the customer, right? Because I don't know how many of you like french fries and a chocolate shake. I, yeah, I like it, salty, savory, but some people may not. And I know a lot of people don't like pineapple on pizza. Right? Well, that's so, wrong. <laughs> so, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, certain, I mean, certain things obviously don't go together, um, and certain things do. However, some people like, well, I mean, like, okay, how many of you like, here's a good one, peanut butter and pickles or peanut butter and bacon? Mm. But some people don't like that. But anyway, my whole point is, <laughs> is you can really put anything together just as long as everything looks unified, right? So you're not gonna wanna do like all white and put one red flower in it. You could if that was for the customer's request, but it would look a little out of place. Um, so here I'm mixing dried with fresh. Hey, and it's gonna work. I'll show you, Sue. Okay, so let's place some, where, let's see, some of this preserved oak. Down here on the bottom, let's see. And let's maybe, hmm, let's use this piece. Oh, that's quite sturdy. All right, let's place this one over here. Stuff is very crunchy. I think I'm actually going to snip this one piece out because it's quite heavy and it's kind of disrupting with the larkspur over here. Kind of giving it a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, space. All right, we're getting a little crooked here looking at this. Let's see. We need to kind of intertwine these perfectly inside. So. keep the balance. All right, this one was just wired and taped, so that one can just go right in. That one's fine. Can you tell there. everybody what the dry material is? Oh, that's is? right. <laughs> yes, this is uh, bleached and preserved oak leaves. Mm -hmm. Oak leaves. All right, so let's see. What are we going to put in here next? Let's try... Let's try. This is again going to be very simple but impactful. Um, Amy's wanting to know if the materials that you're putting in there, if it's going to muddy the water or if you have to worry about that. Um, muddy the water. Um, no. Um, to be quite honest, the dried materials probably aren't even. Let's probably say the water is probably right about here because, right, my larkspur stems are going to be super long. Um, so these are actually cut quite short and are probably about right here and they're weaved nice and tightly in there So they're not really in too much water, but no, they're not going to muddy up the water very much 
All right, putting in some beautiful eucalyptus to break the line of the container. And this is also going to bring in a little bit of that bluish hue. Oh, this, this is just so pretty. When do you ever get to see eucalyptus with so many bracts on it? Super pretty. Okay, so just a few, just to drape over. Did you have a question, Leanne? You've got a couple students that have checked in with you, and Jessica just wanted to say oh, yes. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because she mm -hmm. appreciates your reviews, yes. and the subtle changes makes her work so much better. Yes. So a huge thank you from Jessica. And then Stephanie was called out for some family business, and so she hasn't been home for a bit, and she came home, and her certificate was waiting for her. Yay! So she's very, very excited. Oh, my gosh! So exciting. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you for Leanne for mentioning Jessica because I had you on my list. Okay, so first of all, Jessica, I don't know if you're going to post that picture. You should because what she she did a funky and modernized uh, take, and I don't know if actually she was meaning to do um, Fourth of July, but because her colors were uh, blue and white, but for her red she used like a fuchsia, but it was still like a modern take on it. And she did the vertical, but had like they were grouped in all these beautiful lines, which is very hard to do. So kudos to you. Yeah, I was like, oh, you're on, you're doing the, the funky fresh 4th of July uh, week too, cool. <laughs> so great job. And then also Harmony, is Harmony out there? Have you seen Harmony on there? I haven't seen Harmony yet, no. Okay, usually she's on, she emailed earlier, I'm sure she's on. Um, she emailed a picture today and she did like a low pave, red, white, and blue, but it looked like the flag and it was super cool. Um, and then let's see, so it was, yes, it was Harmony and Jessica that I really wanted to do a shout out today and tell you guys that I love seeing the modernized funky 4th of July. Okay, um, rolling a red tea leaf. I used to work with these all the time and these are always such a treat when I get to see these and work with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place these in just right down here and this is these are going to establish the focal area so how am i doing this i know that most of you probably know how to do this but this is one foliage manipulation that you'll ask for um, last time but what i'm doing is i'm just shaving down the stem a little bit just to make it not so bulky giving it a cut roll it pierce it towards the end and then I always like to insert this way with the flap up. It just seems a lot more natural. So I'm just gonna group excuse me, a few right here in the center. Ooh, that's a cool technique. <laughs> hmm. Do we teach this in basic or advanced? You know, sometimes we do it in basic, it just depends on, it depends on the materials and it depends on the mood we're in. So, <laughs> <laughs> one right here. So the question is, does the branch count as breaking the line of the container? Uh, yes, it does. It definitely, it definitely does. And again, what this also does too, if you want to talk about Fibonacci, this is going in the decreased formula, mm -hmm. right? So you would stop here probably at the one and then you would do it the other way, the decreased, and then you go that way, right? Yes, so okay, let's see. Um, hmm. Let's play with some of this is called bottle brush, also known as, I had to write it down, calistamon. Totally look like brushes. So let's just add just a little bit down to the base. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it's going to. Um, so again, it's a very subtle red, white, and blue, right? Um, I think I wanna go, 
let's actually take this off. So I just want to just enhance a little, little bit of red down here at the bottom. I don't know if I like it or not, but let's just see. Let's just see. I kind of like it without it, but maybe just adding just, just a few over here. Maybe. I like it when, you know, you know me, I like it when things are very clean and simple, very sleek. So maybe just a few, just to add a little bit of texture and contrast. And you all notice too, there, it's not a form flower down there in the focal area or a mass flower in the focal area. I created visual weight with these bold leaves with the tea leaves because of their color and their color volume, excuse me, the, their, their uh, density and uh, visual weight. This is what's actually creating um, more, uh, more of the focal area because of the weight. So let's just see. Just a few more, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. Again, I don't want to add too much to take away really from this beautiful movement and the height, then yeah. So I hope you like that one. <laughs> and this one is more of the vertical explosion of the fireworks, right? It just goes. It looks super, <laughs> it looks super cool on camera. Yay, all right. Let's go ahead and move this one. So they're answering you as to what they're doing, and our tribe is going to be pretty crazy over the holiday. Oh, yeah? Um, Kathleen is going to a week's worth of excitement of music and fireworks and rodeo and everything. Ooh. Nicole's going to sleep because she's working on weddings. And then Tomasi's heading to Vashon, and Loretta and the BLT girls are celebrating a hundredth Birthday party. Oh my gosh, friend. wow! And Barbara's going trout fishing. Ooh, so fun. we have some diversity. Along yeah, there. fun. I just pushed this down a little too far, but it's okay. Oh, and, and happy Canada Day. Canada Day. Oh, happy Canada tomorrow. Day. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> that's right, that's true. Our Canadian friends. Okay, so the next one, I just want to make sure I uh, answer all these questions. Let's see. Um, so going back to uh, the spray paints, I had, um, let's see, Jody ask, um, can you use regular spray paint on flowers since um, Design Master is so hard to get right now? Um, yes. Yes, you can. Um, I mean, Design Master, right, is made for flowers, but you know, in a pinch, you can use it. Just make sure you hold the uh, spray can a lot farther away because it is a bit more toxic than, um, you know, the design master, but yeah, you can use it. Okay, have you all seen these? These are quite on trend right now. These dandelions, aren't these just so cute? And for those of you that are subscribed to our newsletter, you should have received the Tulip Tuesday tip on how Leanne um, preserves these so they're, they don't fall apart. These are courtesy of Teacher Michelle at Camp Sherman. So thank you. I've been actually, they have been here in the studio for like months. So I'm like, literally like every like week, I'm like, Leanne, what's up? Are you gonna use these? What's happening? Cause I really wanna use these. So I get to use them today. And come on, do these not look like fireworks? They sure do. I think I'm gonna have to <laughs> Decide this on the back counter again too because I think it's gonna be too tall. Let's just see. So I need to find my tallest one, but I think it's this one. I think my and I'm probably not in the probably just out of the frame, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go back here. Hopefully you all can see that. I know, I always go so tall, I'm sorry. Well, let's talk about size and scale. Julie had a really, really, really great question. She actually emailed me asking about size. Let's see, um, where is, where did I put your, okay. Okay, so Julie says, 
Okay, so size may be influenced by the other use of elements like darker colors, uh, coarse textures, and visually heavier components can express a sense of larger size. In addition, also in relation to selling of an arrangement, value for the money, which is also known as perceived value, right? This is what I was taught from the very beginning, go big or go home, right? So this is why I usually always go big because I like it to look like as much money as possible. So that's the one thing with size, why I always like to go out of the frame. Um, and then also, this one's gonna be a very good example and I also talked about it in the previous one, having visual weight at the base um, to making it just look heavier and like more money and it wasn't even a flower. Um, so just for one, we're starting off going really tall here to get, to give the customer the most bang for their buck, right? So just placing in these sweet little dandelions, zigzagging, zigzagging down. So we're going to create a line here. Let's see. Let's put you over. Oof. Let's see. We'll put you in the front. These ones have to be very precisely placed. They can't, I know, I'm probably standing in front of this, right? Yes. But it has to be perfect because you have to see every single one. And I practiced this a bunch of times because it has to be perfect. But you can see each fluff just above your head, so. You <laughs> can see each fluff. Good, all right, and this last one right here, I think. I think that's okay. It's okay. I think. Uh, it's, it's not perfect, but it's okay. We'll just keep going. Okay. So there's our just burst of spy, uh, fireworks there. And here, the reason why I place these up top, not on the bottom. Okay, because again, here we're talking about size and also textural differences on how to make things look bigger. These are so light and like see-through that they don't hold a lot of weight, weight, right? So that's why I say that five times, weight, right? Um, <laughs> they don't hold a lot of weight, so that's why they're gonna go up here up top. Okay, let's see, let's, let's see if we can place one of these hydrangea. Let's base this right on the bottom, taking all of the leaves off. So I want this to be nice and clean. And we're just going to place it right here in the center for our blue. Okay, are you ready? All right, for our red, I have our anthuriums. So I was sketching this out last night, Dane knows, because I was sketching it at like 11 o'clock at night because I was like freaking out and I was like, I just, I just need to sketch it and I felt better. <laughs> I actually was gonna cut these very short and place them here, but when I came in today looking at these, are you kidding, I cannot, I can't cut this off. I just cannot. This right here is also visual value, perceived value, because if I take this, and cut it, I just lost $10 off this stem visually, right? So let's just embrace the curve and embrace the length, all right? Okay, so let's go over here and see how, let's see. Again, this has to be precise. So see how it kind of directs the eye this way, and then this one is just going to follow. And it's place. Oh, it's just a bit too close. You need just a bit more space so your eyes can also travel just a bit faster. Still just a bit too, oh, it's too close to this one. and the lines are crossing. See here how the lines are crossing? You really want to get it nice and straight. 
straight. And let's see, let's push this one down. Let's, because you see here how this one can come over and over, almost shelter this one. Is it just me or is it really starting to get hot in here? <laughs> it's not just you. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get these perfectly in their spots. You know, it's fun to watch you designing and the students are commenting and it's like, oh my gosh, we all struggle with some of these things. And then um, Rachel is talking about for a newbie, it's so hard. And so she's practicing her wiring oh. and taping. Right. And John's working on details for his final submission. And so, you know, watching you go, oh, they can't cross, they can't cross. It makes y'all crazy. Yeah, but you know what? It actually, they kind of actually work together, so I'm actually just going to leave it because I think there was, who was it that I just saw recent, where was it? Oh, I think it was on another Facebook uh, po or page that I follow, and it's like, when do you just know when to stop fiddling? It's just like, it just comes with time that after a while, you know, after about an hour, and you're like, this arrangement's only like 50 bucks, and you kind of got to get out of the door, you'll, you'll learn when to stop. Okay, so let's see. All right, let's play with some tinted preserved Italian ruscus. This stuff bleeds if you have sweaty hands like me. Um, so just be uh, careful. All right, so let's see. Let's snip this one. And now we're just going to, see how this has a nice curve? So we're just going to follow these anthuriums. Let's see, let's actually go down here. While you're placing that, Bernadette would like to know why the stems cannot cross. Yes, great question. Um, okay, so see here how they do cross, but they actually looks intentional because they're actually just moving together. But sometimes when things just cross, it's pretty much because they're not going, they're not coming out of the, the same binding point. Um, and it just looks a little confusing. Um, so it's almost kind of like, sort of kind of like when you're sewing or something and like you're sewing in a straight line and then you have to go over it and you're like, you know, it kind of, it works, but it's, it looks a little off, sort of. That's kind of how I can explain it. And it just looks a lot cleaner. But here it just works because again, they kind of, are y'all doing that at home like this? Kind of <laughs> works together. All right, let's see. I wish this curved a little bit more. This one is just a bit too, ooh, there we go. See how I just, oh, did you see that? I just turned it just a little bit. I just added a bit more movement. All right, let's see. It is a bit too long though. You notice that? Well, let's just leave it because things started moving. We will try to fix that as we go because we have to balance this out with this might be too heavy but let's just see let's just see actually i think that kind of works all right let's see what's next oh here we go my lotus pods I actually color enhance these as well, white first and then red. Um, these are super fun. I used to work with these all the time as well. Um, so these are gonna be fun to place in. This is a huge tip for you all, because this also has to do with face flowers as well. Anything that has a face, like, say for instance, a Gerber Daisy. See how this is just staring at you like, hey, look at me, and it's kind of intimidating. But if you just take this one and just turn it on its profile just a little bit, or if you wanted just to kind of lift its head up, it's not as dominant and just in your face. So a lot of the times with these lotus pods, I see them placed like this straight on. And again, it's like, whoa, you know? However, if you terrace them, it brings the eye in. Leanne! Jessica wants to know if you have any concerns due to anthurium being poisonous um, and any hints as to being careful with it or anything. Anthuriums? Um, no, I don't know them of being poisonous. If oh, if you eat them. Oh. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, I don't know. 
who out who out there is going to be chomping on anthurium, right? <laughs> yeah, just don't eat these ones. Yeah, um, yeah I had no you idea. Know, they're bitter, and so they're poisonous to humans, dogs, oh. and cats. But since they are so bitter, generally people just taste them and spit them out. But oh. if you were to ingest a lot of it, yeah, it can. It's not a good thing. Oh, yeah, I had I had no idea. Okay, so see how these are. They're, they're a little bit more on a profile. Look at my, can you see my hands? But they're a little bit more on a profile and it's terraced too, here, right above the hydrangea. So this pops out um, and really emphasizes that focal area, right? So again, this red is, holds most dominance because of the color and the color volume of it. Um, so it's making this part look heavier. So this is why I wanted to explain to Julie with, with uh, size and textures and colors that this is what I'm doing with this is creating visual weight there. Could you identify your materials? We've got several oh, questions about that. So yeah. Kind of review yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Okay. So we have our dandelions, <clears throat> our fireworks above, and then we have our anthurium, um, preserved, uh, what did the other? Viscous. No, but I know. What did the the previous person call this color? Colored, not color enhanced. Colorized. Colorized, <laughs> colorized Italian ruscus, and then uh, hydrangea and lotus pots. Okay, so let's see here. Let's let's place in some more fireworks. Come on, you cannot use. Eryngium for the 4th of July because there as we all know there's not a lot of blue flowers out there, right? So Eryngium of course and they look like fireworks So just removing some off the stem and then we'll just kind of tuck some in just to Add a little bit of Flare Oh hoo -hoo. Just kind of bring some to the back to bring your eye back. Let's see. Yeah. So yes. Nice, nice and sparkly. <laughs> Prickly even. So let's place this one just a bit lower. Can you all see this okay? I hope so. Does it show on? Mm -hmm. Does it show? sure does? It looks amazing. Okay, good. Okay, and since let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I have enough room. Let's actually bring some down just a little bit. So when you have the foam higher, you can actually up. You can insert up. I think this might be just a bit too big, but let's just try. There. Then we have some fun uh, uh, fan palm that has been dried and also colorized. <laughs> um, and this is just going to add a little bit of that bling and sparkle that, you know, like when, I don't know about you, but when fireworks go off, right, it just looks like someone just threw just a ball of glitter and like I love it when it like kind of streams down. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So um, we're gonna break the line of the container here and add more visual weight. So this is just gonna come out here and create a little bit of a shelf there. Let's just snip this one and this one's just gonna, ooh, these are quite, oh my. Oh, these are, oh, okay, I got it. Um, we're just going to, Group and insert here. Oh, look how fun. See all the negative space here? Lots of negative space. Lots of um, lines to uh, follow through here. And then let's draw the eye down even more with some preserved and bleached hanging amaranthus. Uh, I don't know about you, um, if you've ever worked with this stuff, it's very, very fragile. So, let's see. I'll show you what I did here to make this easier on you guys. Because uh, it gets all tangled and then you have this really kind of wimpy stem that you can't insert in, right? 
we'll just go ahead and grab your wired pick and go ahead and place this on. You're basically doing a clutch wrap over like this. And then cut to the length that you need. I like this piece. This is the, the one I personally chose. <laughs> All right, let's see. So let's, let's see. What side do we want this on? I had it on this side earlier when I practiced. But I feel like I think I might want it on the other side. Oh, this this move. I think this moved. I think I kind of want it over here now. Oh, that's so cool! Do you guys like this one? Yeah, Tess says it's modern and colorful. Modern and colorful, and yeah, it's, so with red, white, and blue, it can be really hard. Typically, it's it's seen typically it's seen very symmetrically placed, like perfectly even spacing throughout. Um, but to to for to make it easier to to modernize it, if you color block and have things grouped in colors, it looks uh, a lot more um, higher end and uh, modernized. So that's what I did here. Uh, now all I would have to do is just I would probably take some of my Variegated Pitosporum, because I did make this one-sided, and then just go through, and look, even just little, this is the most beautiful Pitosporum I've ever seen. I think I said that on the last live. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to take this and go through, and even just little bits here and there, just to cover my mechanics, but it does add a little bit more contrast right to the design while also covering our mechanics so that's what i that's what i'll do i'll finish after so you all don't see any of the mechanics in the photographs tomorrow so i'll kind of put bring this on forward i feel like this piece may be a bit too long and maybe pushing it i don't know because um, i'm a bit too close to it but I'll go ahead and bring this just a bit forward so you all can see. And Barbara was wondering what the blue flower is. I think she's looking at the Oringium. This one, the spiky one, the one that looks like a firework, even though we all do. Yes, it's Oringium. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back here. This one. And then we're gonna do this one. Rose has a great question. Instead of the wired wood pick, could you use a pick machine? So yeah, oh, absolutely, for sure, yeah. Um, some of us don't have a pick machine, right? Uh, so uh, using wires uh, and or wood picks is just a great alternative, but oh yeah, yeah. I just didn't feel like picking up, you know, I think weighs like a thousand pounds. I just didn't want to pick it up. We actually have one right here. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I think I pretty much answered everything except for a couple. So I'm gonna move forward with this and then we'll talk about it. Okay, this one, we're doing this together. I'm very nervous about it, okay? So hopefully it'll turn out that we'll do it together. I even have an inspiration photo over here that I am looking at for a reference. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So notice my container, it's not a true red, right? But it is a shade. Actually, it kind of might be like a tone in a shade of red-ish because it looks grayish black. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. This is Smokebush and how fabulous is this? Okay, all right, so we are going to, I have to find the perfect pieces. Oh man, this one is gonna be very, very hard to design backwards because- But you're such a pro. <laughs> you got this, Marisa. Well, what I'm trying to attempt today is uh, inspired from Scott from last week, he's like, what about a masculine best bow? Well, Scott, here you go. This is gonna be more on the masculine side. Okay, so let's see, let's actually 
see how this all comes out here. So I'm just going to take off some of these leaves. Okay. So is it is this clock over here correct? Do I only have 10 minutes? Correct. Okay. So we may I may not finish all the way, but we will get the majority of it done. Okay? And then I will finish it so you can see the finished product tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to cut this one up. I can't. I can't. So I might have to go to my house. <laughs> well, let's see. These ones, okay. These actually look like these would be perfect for the other side. So again, I'm going to be relying on Carolyn because she has seen the photograph. <laughs> so she's going to tell me if I'm on the right track here. Looking good so far. <laughs> Whew, I'm breaking a sweat. <laughs> I'm glad you all can see, you know, I'm trying something new, something different. So don't be afraid, right, to challenge yourself and try things new and different too. Okay, so I'm just using the smoke bush just to start to create a little bit of my form. Doesn't this just match the container perfectly. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. How's it looking? It looks good. Okay. Is that too much? I think that might be too much. What do you think? I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. That's good. All right. I am going to place in Just some here. Oh, that piece is broken. It's just so light and this texture is just so pretty. I wish you all could have just seen it at the market. It was probably about this tall. Um, couldn't believe that I overlooked it and then turned around and was like, oh, how wow, <laughs> there you are. Okay. Okay, so then, okay, so you know how, actually, let's not, let's not go there yet. So let's place some of this in and answer some of these questions. So let's see, uh, Lisa wanted to know how to keep uh, flowers fresh and alive in these hot temperatures. Uh, she's got a few weddings this summer. Well, great question. Um, <clears throat> really, hopefully you have a cooler, a uh, flower cooler, because uh, that will definitely uh, help with that. Um, when I had a wedding and events company, um, really, if, the, if you can keep everything in air conditioned as long as possible, um, while you're setting up, say, so say for instance, if you're setting up for a wedding and um, you know, you're doing an outside ceremony, uh, try to keep everything inside somewhere that has uh, air conditioning, um, or there have been times where I had to get a refrigerated truck. Like I was like, you know, this is, this is you have to get one because your flowers are not gonna make it. Um, so that's pretty much um, my best advice. It's just keeping everything as cool as possible. Um, Cause I really feel like regardless, even if it's um, really hot outside, really, really hot, the everything's probably gonna be moved inside anyway, I can only assume. Okay, this is acacia foliage. Isn't that beautiful? I hope you can see it cause I kind of placed it to the back here, but hopefully it adds a little bit of depth and volume. So you know when you're at the fireworks show, right? And then at the very, very end, there's the grand finale. You guys wanna see my grand finale flower? Are you ready? I hope you're at home going, yes! <laughs> Look at this! How cool is that? This is an artichoke blooming. All right, I, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Let's see if I can even cut this. I am not gonna attempt to cut this with my knife, no way. Okay, all right. 
right, let's see. I'm going to turn this around really quick. Oh, things are moving. Oh. Oh. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I want it. Can I take it home? <laughs> right? Okay. Where are we at? Okay, we got five minutes. Okay, so let's grab now some iris, but not the typical iris, the blue that we get. I got this really pale blue. All right, so let's use this beautiful cur Oh my gosh, my picture went away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last question I received was from, let's see, Amy. So, Amy, if you're on, I don't know if you saw my, uh, my answer, or actually more of a, a, a comment um, to your, a reply to your comment today, uh, but her calla lilies, uh, she wasn't using mini callas, she was using the bigger calla lilies. She had them in foam and um, she said they wilted. Um, but the picture that I saw of yours, um, the callas didn't look wilted, so I don't know if that was before or after. So I'm kind of, I'm a little bit confused because actually standard callas take a lot to wilt. So I do wonder if uh, stem insertion played into that, especially into foam. Um, because those stems are so hard to get in foam and you may have to do a, uh, an insertion first with like your knife and then go in or even something bigger than your knife. Um, so yes, Leanne, I'm going to have to turn it. I have to turn it. So the um, <laughs> question was, what were those flowers? And I knew you were going to use them, so I didn't ask the question. Ah, so okay. I see that okay. It's the iris. Okay. And the colors in that are so fabulous. It doesn't read quite as well on camera. Oh, you so can't see very well. You have to wait till the pro shots to really get a good visual. Yes. Because um, the iris doesn't have the power. Yes. It still looks good on camera, but they'll be amazed when they see it yeah. with the pro shot. Yeah, it's really, it's really quite stunning. It's, uh, yeah, they're just, they're like the palest, palest. <sighs> lavendery purple um oh my gosh this is really cool okay so roxy this, wants to know if the acacia foliage was that natural color or if yes. you colorized no it was that natural color yeah all right then let's play look at these scabby osa they're so jumbo Oh my gosh, you guys, we only have two minutes. Does anyone have any last minute questions? Caprina wanted to know if you could put feathers in the modern designs. You can put anything you would like into anything, just as long, right, as it is all unified. Is this too straight, Carolyn? Mm, I think so. I think it's too straight. Let's talk about this. Yes, it's yeah. too straight. So see how these all have this beautiful curve. So this is a really good example, talking about what goes together and what doesn't, right? Even though these are the same color and they look unified together, but once I place this in straight, it just doesn't look like it's, it belongs. So I have to find something that could sing the same song that everybody else is singing. So let's see if we can make, this. oh, is this too tall? I want this to be like ridiculous, ridicu ridiculously out of scale, but balanced, if that makes sense. <laughs> and this little. So Vedette's birthday is July 3rd. She's decided you could send this to her for her birthday. We'll put it in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we are out of time, but I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit and place one more in. Is that pushing the boundaries right there? Perfect. Is this working? Mm -hmm. There you go. 
I can't find the foam. This <laughs> artichoke is like taking up the whole base here. All right, maybe right about there. Uh, it's, it's a little, a little too straight. This one is definitely going to have to be uh, designed uh, in front of it, but it's already been an hour. I can't believe it. I hope you enjoyed live stream today. Thank you so much for joining. Tune in on our um, social media pages tomorrow. We'll uh, definitely have pictures up for you. Please have a safe and fun, fabulous and funky 4th of July weekend. Do something you love, and we'll see you next week. Bye!